Shall I put a mask on? No, no, that's okay. me. I've gone three years without getting any in, so I'm, I'm saying, an old man, so I don't want to get any You don't look too old, Harry. <laughs> that's why I'm finishing at the end of the term. Okay, so do you mind holding that one? Okay. And we can walk and talk? Yeah, you, yeah. We're, so where are we going, Maury? Um, so we're just going to take a walk um, right throughout the school so you can get a bit of a feel for the modern learning environment and its, its openness, its flexibility, its connectedness. Modern learning environments, open plan classrooms. Critics call them an experiment with no proof they are better for students. But Hobsonville Point Secondary School here in Auckland's northwest is expanding to take nearly four times its current role of 770 students. That's a controversial plan in itself, and some say it's a victim of its own success. So we're going into a classroom? Yeah, yeah so let's just walk into here. These are Year 9 and 10 students because we don't run Year 9 programs and Year 10 programs. They're all combined together into one group. I'm Sharon Brett Kelly and today on The Detail I'm with Principal Maury Abraham to find out more about how it works and why this has been dubbed the school with no rules. It's a place where the pedagogy or method of learning is quite different. Teachers are called coaches, classes are modules and everyone's on first name terms. So at a time when some say our education system is in crisis, should we be looking at this model as a solution? This is a, an open learning space which has got a specialist food attached to it and I'm not fully sure what, what these kids are doing. So, hey folks, can, I, can we just interrupt a, a little bit? Um, so I've got a visitor here who's finding out a bit about our school. Hi, I'm Jen, what's your name? I'm Sharon. Well, it's very nice to meet you, Miss Sharon. So is, it, is, this a, is this a module or a spin? I think it's a module. It's got, so you've got two teachers? So June, who teaches business, who's your other teacher? Gabby. Oh, she's currently Gabby. The kitchen teaching people how to cook. Right, so this is a module that's a combination of business and food. Yeah, yeah I think so. Uh, yeah, so you're... We're currently learning about human rights. Human rights, oh, yeah. How does that yeah. fit into business or food? We're discussing um, how uh, beef is not very good for the environment. And then, and then what, what do you do with this information? We, we have to make a speech about it. OK, you're in a debate about it. Yeah. Thank you for talking to Thanks, me. Thanks, folks. Yeah, see you later. <laughs> Confident kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so they're, they're year nine. They've only been here a term. And, you know, disruption as well with that term. We didn't start for a couple of weeks because of the cyclone and the floods. And what do you think that that's, that sort of open, fairly relaxed environment encourages that sort of... Confident, nurtures that confidence? Yeah, like we've got a real strong drive to create an environment where it's safe for those people journeying through adolescence to practice at being adults, you know, rather than be focused on controlling kids to the nth degree. Um, and then when they get it wrong, we tidy up the mess and we do some learning from that. It sounds right, it sounds good as a way of learning. Why isn't every school following this? I think we're in a, in a stage of transition. You know, the, what we would call the traditional model has been around a long time and, and people have been operating in that and they're comfortable operating in that space. And um, as m most professions and industries have gone through major transformational change, it's difficult and, and it takes time. You were the foundation principal yes. of this school. Yes. Was this school built for this kind of pedagogy? Oh, I believe so. I mean, I mean, the building was designed to be... Um, you know, visible, flexible, connected. Um, and then my job when I came on as principal is to try to match the curriculum and the pedagogy to those concepts, you know, because there are a lot of modern learning environments in which really traditional teaching occurs. Um, and I was appointed to, to, you know, really try and align the curriculum and the pedagogy with what the building was trying to achieve. We're going yeah. through a um, yeah, so it's corridor a, it's, here. We are built for 1350 and we have 770 here at the moment, so we're, we're quite luxurious for space. What are your year, what's your year level? Level 2. Oh, yeah, so they're year 12 students do, um, doing a chemistry NCA class. NCA level 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I suppose in a typical environment, sort of, where they're gathered around yeah, tables with their laptops. Yeah, they're gathered around the... You know, I mean, you say it's sort of like a typical classroom, but actually there's three walls in this classroom and the rest right. is really and, open. And there could be two or three classrooms operating in here. One of the things we believed was that kids in open learning spaces um, moderate their volume and they moderate their behaviour. 
because they're not locked away in a cell where it's easier to be a bit of a dork, you know. So now we're just walking past this, and it, there's a little bit more activity in here because this is a year 19 class with about 45 kids and two mm -hmm. teachers. And as we're walking in, we're hearing the noise increase a little bit, and yeah. it sounds like fairly active noise, but as we were walking down the corridor around the corner, we don't hear it. OK, so we describe this a little bit? So we've sort of come into an entrance way yeah. off the off the hallway. No, there's no door to come no. through. Uh, immediately my eye comes to this... Uh, piece of work? Piece of work, Yeah, a mannequin yes. with, with, a, uh, with some fabric design material over it. Kind of a tutu and a t-shirt, yeah, yeah, all in green. Yes, yeah, so the, we're in a learning commons and there's quite a few that are shaped exactly like this. Big open space with a tucked around presentation space with a small breakout room with a medium-sized breakout room which in which another class has been taught. and that's a, that, closed doors. That, yes, and that's a senior uh, physics class that's been taught in there. Attached to it is a teacher workspace where five or six teachers are based. But it's also part of one of our learning communities in the school. So we're actually in Tiriwa, Te Waunui Tiriwa, the great forest of Tiriwa, which is the Waitakere. So that's like a schoolhouse. And sitting inside here during our learning hub time, which is our equivalent of form class, but on steroids, will be five or six learning hubs of the Tiriwa community. That's their colour. That's their uniform that they would have worn at a, the spirit day we had at the end of last term. So one of the hubs has designed that, and so that's still sitting here on display. So twice a week for 80 minutes, they're in their hub time. There'd be five or six groups of 16 or 17 students sitting in circles with their learning coach, which is their teacher, and that teacher is the warm and demanding adult who's supporting them to grow not only their academic excellence, but what we believe is just as important is their personal excellence. And we um, address the personal excellence by looking at the 10 Hobsonville habits that we think are just as important as English, math and science. And that thing, things like being adventurous, being curious, being creative, being compassionate, being resilient... And it was our COVID experience which proved that correct. So that our students coped better with the disruption of the pandemic. How do you know that and why do you say that? Because even though we had lots of lockdowns and lots of hybrid learning, um, our students have coped uh, both academically and also um, the feedback to the coaches. Because you, you think these coaches know these kids really well. They've only got 16 and they've got them for five years. So they understand these kids and the feedback to our coaches and through our surveys is about how the kids still felt connected to the school, how they felt they could cope with the change um, and the knocks and ricocheting around that were, were occurring. Coming through past the library now, so yeah. it's, all, it's all just off this one long, yes. wide hallway. And this used to be the Hobsonville Air Force Base. Oh, I did it? Yeah, and so this is aligned with the original airfield, so this is sort of like the runway that we're walking down. <laughs> That's and, excellent. And we walk into the library, you'll note there's no doors, there's no security system, we have a self-issue system. But what I like about it is it, it flows out here into the, the centre of our pathways programme. It's to create a more adult environment, similar to perhaps a university space. Mm. And so this is where students will come along and um, get their pathways advice and work independently. Do you think I could um, talk to these kids yeah. about how they feel about yeah. being at the school? Hey, folks. Hello, Murray. How Hi. Are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Look, um, this is Sharon, who's just doing some work on a podcast. Do you mind just chatting with her and seeing if I've been telling the truth or not? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. don't have to tell me your name. No. I just want to get an idea of how different it is to maybe a more traditional kind of school. Can I ask you? Yeah, you? certainly. I was because I was born here, but I was in Fiji for quite a while. So I you know, had that experience having a traditional school and having the more stricter and more, dis more discipline-based round system. But here at Hobsonville Point Secondary School, it's, it's definitely a much more, you know, easier sort of environment. You know, you're quite dependent of yourself, and I think my learning here has definitely been much better. What about your grades? How are they going? Grades are going pretty good. Um, teachers are very, very supportive about it. And in this open plan environment, do you not feel distracted by what else is going on, you know, you're not in, you're not kind of inside four walls like a, a, a traditional classroom. It's all very open. Do, does that that's not distracting? No, it's not distracting at all. Um, everyone's just focused on what 
on themselves, really, and in their own work. I mean, you've still got rules to follow, haven't you? Yeah. Say if you're doing something wrong, you haven't done your homework or, I don't know, you're talking in class, some of those basic things, what happens? So our, our school doesn't have like a full-on set of rules. It's mainly expectations. So your expectations are, you know, you don't have to, you don't, you don't, you know, there's no phones allowed in class unless a teacher has asked you to bring out a phone. You're, and it's once again very self-independent. So you know, your expectations is to complete your work on time, be in the right space at the right time. Things like, I don't know, vaping. That's a big issue at the moment. Definitely, there is an issue about that. Um, the, our school has a way of dealing with those types of things, so it's a very resta- restorative way of ha- having it. So it's just like you go for your hub coach, you know, they ask you why you're doing it, and then they, give, they provide you the support, you know, if it's, if it's for a mental, re- you know, mental health reason why you're doing it, which, is, I, which I believe is the reason why most kids are doing it. Vaping. They, yeah. Um, so they, you know, they get the support that they need. And, you know, teachers can help them out about it. We have counsellors here that can help them out about it. They've got friends that can help them out about it. Thank you. Why are you leaving, Mori? I mean, this seems like such a, an ideal school. Why, why are you leaving in the middle of the year? Um, I've been a principal for 20 years. I've recently turned 65. As I said before, the school's in a stage where it's going to be moving from accommodating 1,350 to 2,500. We've been going for 10 years. I love what we do so much that I don't want to be a barrier to the more change that needs to occur. Change needs to occur because of what we've learnt from COVID and we need to be even more open to self-regulation for kids. We need to, to give them even more responsibility. And I'm not hugely motivated by the idea of, of leading a, a, a property development that I don't... Um, aren't committed to secondary schools being of that size. So the school is basically being directed to grow, take in more students. And you you don't like that? I don't agree with the idea of um, secondary schools being that large. For me, the key to successful engagement in, in schools for kids and for teachers is the quality of of the relationships that we all have with each other. Um, that sense of whanaungatanga is so important. And I, I don't believe that's as easy to do in, in schools that large. What would be an alternative, build another school in the area? Yes, I mean, there, there's ways of um, perhaps looking at a junior, senior sc- school concept in the area. What um, are we looking at here? Yeah, so we're, we're just joining another um, junior foundation module in the main space. Right. So the year nines and tens do 70% of their program not in single subjects. So some kids in year nine and ten might be doing their maths with PE, some might be doing their maths with art, some might be doing their maths with science. One thing you will notice here is too we don't have bells. Um, no, I haven't heard one bell. We don't have bells because there's no bell out in the world and if you're serious about self-regulation, then you don't want to train your kids to be robots and your teachers to be robots because there's only one thing that happens in the school with a bell when the bell goes. That means everyone packs up and leaves, no matter where you are with your teaching. It's it's 10.30, this is when this block ends and kids go into break time. There's been no bell. Uh, Kids have started to move as as they've finished their learning. Where to now, Maury? Oh, what we should do is have the opportunity. Here's Phoebe here, who's um, hi Phoebe, who's one of our <laughs> teachers. And, and unfortunately, Phoebe's leaving at the end of the term and started here as a beginning teacher. But uh, now the world's opened up; she's got to get out and travel. So I've maybe heard yeah, to yeah. what it's like teaching here. And your surname uh, is Smith. Phoebe, Phoebe Smith. Smith. Yeah. Okay, so this was your first job yes. at the school. Yeah, straight out of university, I got the job here. What was it like? I was applying at a few schools across the country initially, and I didn't feel hugely inspired by a lot of the jobs that were on offer. Why not? But also, um, I felt inspired to lean into cross-curricular teaching, look, look forward to the future of education, rather than feeling like I'm coming out really inspired and then I'm going to have to go backwards and perhaps teach in a school where there is streaming or things that I didn't believe in. Mm-hmm. Um, and so more, the this, more traditional model. Yeah, when I came here, I've, I've felt really valued the entire time. What do you teach here? Visual arts, painting, photography, yeah, printmaking. So ha- what do you do here that might be different from a more traditionally structured school? Co-teaching, cross curricular teaching. So I've taught with 
a range of subject areas. I've taught with an English teacher, um, maths teacher, social science. So did some really cool um, science visual arts teaching around the senses and the science behind the senses and how we see and how we touch and how we feel. And we were looking at how every person in a community can connect with art. Let's look at some of the issues that are going on with education. Absenteeism, is that a problem here? Uh, Yes, it's probably a problem everywhere. It's definitely, like for me, I was studying during covid I came in in another COVID year, so I haven't had a year teaching that isn't, hasn't been disrupted by that. Why are they away now, though? Is it truancy? Yeah, probably in some cases. Yeah, so why? Yeah. If this is such a great school, why, why are they still not coming to class? I think the impact that COVID's had in terms of heightened anxiety, um, children that you see a change in how they communicate with each other and you. Really? Um, in what way? For sure. I find, like, having senior classes where we do a lot of working together with... Um, feedback sessions and that kind of thing over half of the class will feel anxious too anxious to speak in front of the group. And that's because what their lives have been dis- so disrupted Just behind a screen for so long I think and learning to bring those skills back where you learn to speak in front of people and discuss your ideas out loud and have the confidence to do that kind of thing Do you think this will be overcome in time you know that we need to give it a year, two years, three years Yeah, I think so. We need to be identifying those issues and then teaching to it, I think. So, you know, I found in those situations that I I don't push kids so far out of their comfort zone that that anxiety is heightened and um, it's making them feel really uncomfortable, but it's not not making excuses for saying this is reality of life and actually we need to learn to do these things and support them to make those changes yeah you, you're off on your OE yeah will you come yeah, back yeah. to teaching when you yeah I'm, I'm <laughs> everyone's trying to convince me to come back here <laughs> you know I was talking about hosting visitors mm. so I've got visitors okay, here, yeah. here you know most weeks do you and what looking at this model yeah I mean we, we're having two to three a week from New Zealand around the world before COVID and it's only just starting to you know, ramp up again. But this is my collection of student voice. I just, as you've seen as we've walked into a space, I've just spoken to the people closest to us. Mm. You know, and it's a bit of a risk because you get that, I could get a grunt or I could get quite an eloquent sort of discussion. Yeah, yeah. Which, and, which you get in any... Yeah, so it's genuine student voice I'm collecting, you know, every week just by asking a question and often stepping back and letting them talk. I don't know if you'd say this is experimental. It's probably, no, it's, not, it's, not, not experimental. it's not experimental. But still, with the freedom, you've had a lot of freedom to... Well, every, every school has freedom. Okay. Every school has the right to interpret how it's going to deliver the New Zealand curriculum. Mm. There's a traditional way that tends to be the way that everybody follows. But you don't have to have 25 one-hour periods during a week with four of them given to English by itself and, you know, um, then four of them to math by themselves and no connection between those. And they don't have uniforms, is that...? No, we started with uniform I'm, and I'm still not fully convinced how that got past me. You're not into uniforms? No, I'm into um, adolescents um, practising to be adults. Um, You know, when you walk around here, these kids have more ability to represent who they are because of the way they dress. You know, wearing jeans and track pants and um, hoodies and T-shirts, some, you know, outstanding knee-length boots going on. And uh, if you're a school that's into relationships, well, that's more important than making them all look the same. And you'll notice the first name terms as well, because we're creating this adult environment. So, yes, I am impressed, but I want to ask you about some of these new stories dominating the headlines at the moment. You were saying, as I came in today, what you've got, you do have a number of teachers away and a number of students away today, for example. Almost 25% of our staff are away sick today. That's a heck of a lot, a quarter of your staff. Yes, yes. And that is this whole staffing crisis, the shortage of teachers... We're hearing a lot about that. How do you get round that then? Um, and it's also complicated by the fact that the PPTA industrial action at the moment, which I support, is that um, teachers won't cover classes um, in their non-contact time. Um, and so that's made things much more challenging for us. We've had to cut back on the field trips and the professional learning that we, we can approve because we knew this term was going to be hit with sickness. We're lucky we've got a really good bunch of relievers who like working here. Teaching's become very, very demanding, um, and teachers have really experienced 
you know, real struggle street over the last few years. The feeling now when they're looking at the collective agreement um, negotiation is that they're not really valued for, for the work that they did. And I think it's time that um, we stop talking about a, a, a reasonable settlement and that we, we start talking about a generous settlement. So pay a big issue? Paying conditions, yeah. You, you were talking about attendance, you know. Oh, yeah. I, I'd, I'd like more kids to be at school more often, but I'm not unhappy with the level level of attendance. Because, Generally, what is it? Well, it's, that's an interesting question because statistics tell lots of different stories, you know. Yeah. So we, we hear this about, you know, less than 50% of kids attend at school regularly. Well, you know, in any one day, 90% of kids in New Zealand are in school. So where does that less than 50% figure come from? Well, it comes from the collection of statistics that, that occur every term two in a year. So term two, 2022. Right, we're right in the middle of COVID and right in the middle of one of the worst flu seasons the country's ever had. OK, so that is just not the picture now. It's not the picture now. Um, would I say that um, attendance is a problem across the country? I'd say yes it is, we need to do better. Mm. But the way it's being politicised isn't helping. We feel, we feel under attack, um, as though we should have been doing things differently, that perhaps we haven't done enough around attendance. We have a number of senior students who were put onto part-time programs so they can carry on uh, working for, for money for their whānau. And I think going forward, that's what schools have to explore a bit more. Is it necessary for every single kid to be in school every school day, all day? Or is it possible for them to have a little bit more freedom around where they do their learning from? Which brings us to achievement levels. What's going on here? Are, are the students achieving at levels that match up with historical levels? To totally they are. At an international level, New Zealand is still in the top ten in uh, reading, in science and mathematics. That's outstanding. Um, but we've been fed a, a story, which I believe for political reasons, is that there's, there's massive problem with school, with achievement of students. Yep, some work needs to be done around our qualification to make sure it maintains credibility, but... We're not going to hell in a handbasket. Kids are doing well. And we, um, as a school, look at qualifications quite differently to other schools. You know, we don't do NCA Level 1 as a qualification in Year 11 because that has, has no currency at all. It doesn't get you a job. You don't need it for Level 2 or 3. It doesn't get you into tertiary. Mm -hmm. Yet schools throughout the country are uh, overpowering kids with assessment after assessment after assessment for a qualification that they don't need and it's disengaging those kids from school. You're leaving soon um, and you're leaving this your career. How do you feel about the young people of New Zealand today? I'm in awe of them and I've, I've recognised more and more as my career has gone on that we haven't trusted them enough. If I had my career again, um, the, the, the philosophy to teaching and learning that, that got, has got me to this place we are definitely in place in those, in those other schools as well. Because, you know, I do get hit with, oh, it's all very well working in here because, you know, you're in this type of school. Well, we just got normal kids here. I know our kids are more engaged because we are not focused on what community perception might be about, whether we're hard or soft on kids when they break rules, but that we focus on looking after them. There's kids in here, and I've noticed them as we've walked around, that in many other schools they would have been out of schooling a year or two ago because of the behaviours they were exhibiting. But we stick with them, we work with them, and they're successful. That's it for today. I'm Sharon Brett Kelly. The detail is supported by the Public Interest Journalism Fund. This episode was engineered by William Saunders and produced by Sarah Robson and Bonnie Harrison. And thanks to Maury Abraham. Mā te wā.